today to offer ourselves in prayer and to listen to his word. Let's close our eyes and feel the presence of God. Let us ask the Spirit to prepare our heart to be receptive to what he speaks. That the word that soothes us will also convict us. O oh, Blessed Mother, intercede and pray for us today. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 onwards. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Dear friends, what we read just now is, is a wonderful exhortation or wonderful, wonderful address of the angel to Mary. Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Mary's spirituality obviously does not run parallel to Jesus. Mary's devotion or Marian devotion does not run parallel to Jesus. If Mary has any meaning, Mary's meaning comes from the presence of Christ in her. Not just by the birth of the Savior, not just by that wonderful presence through the Holy Spirit within her womb, but because of what she was in her relationship to Christ, in her relationship to God. Mary would never have a different mandate from that of God. Mary's mandate always had to be in union and closely connected to Jesus, closely connected to God's will. And that is why we would read this, this beautiful, this beautiful word, these beautiful words by the angel. Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. No one before was greeted like this. No human being was ever greeted by an angel in these words. There were wonderful greetings by angels all through the scriptures. But no one has greeted a human the way Mary was greeted. Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Why was she filled with grace? It wasn't just the fact that she was filled with grace, but it was the beautiful, the beautiful thought and the, and the beautiful fact that Mary's life was grace-filled. Everything connected to her life was filled with grace. That is why Mary was a grace-filled daughter. She was a grace-filled wife. She was a grace-filled mother. She was a grace-filled Jew. And that is why we would even say that that is the reason why Mary was even chosen. A woman who was filled with grace. And everything she did was filled with grace. Why? It's pretty clear by the one Marian exhortation we ever see in the scriptures. And that is at the wedding at Cana. When Mary would look at the servants and tell them, do whatever he asks you to. This wasn't just... This wasn't just a statement towards a few men there 2,000 years ago. It was a statement to all of us. 
a statement that she lived herself. Do whatever he asks you to. And that is what underlined Mary's grace-filled life. Do whatever he asks you to. Mary was able to be a graceful daughter, a graceful wife, a graceful mother, because she was open to doing whatever he asks her to do. And that is the same call given to us as well. We are called to be grace-filled. Our lives are meant to be grace-filled. It doesn't mean that we would, we would have an angel come and address us in the same words. But it does mean that if at all we are addressed, it does challenge us. Can we, like Mary, have that underlining statement for everything that we are doing whatever he asks us to. And that is when we become grace-filled. Grace-filled parents, grace-filled children, grace-filled Christians, grace-filled people and citizens of the land we live in. We go through the scriptures as the word tells us how important it is to do whatever he asks us to. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, and 17, the word reads, For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, the pride in riches, comes not from the Father, but from the world. And the world and its desire are passing away. But those who do the will of God will live forever. Those who do the will of God will live forever. It's clear why. Those who do the will of God are actually making this an actuality within their daily lives as children, as parents, as Christians. The scriptures would tell us again in Psalm 40, verse 8. The word reads, I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. If the law is not within our heart, if the law is just in a book, if the law is just in our mind, we will never let that law enter into our daily lives. But when the law is within my heart, like it was in that of Mary, deep within our heart, her life became grace-filled. When the law is within our heart, our lives become grace-filled. His law and his scriptures, as the word would say. And in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, the Lord himself would say, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Dear friends, to open our hearts and to let the law within our heart in every aspect and every vocation that God has called us to. As the scriptures would ask of us, as the word would ask of us, we read, we, we, we are called to be good sons and daughters. Take Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. The word reads, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. The law speaks to us. Do we have hearts that are ready to respond to this call? Do whatever he asks us to then as sons and daughters, this scriptural passage is meant for us to do whatever he asks us to, to honor our parents as children. Take our vocation as a parent. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 reads, And fathers, and you can add mothers, 
Do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. To you as in your vocation, as a father, as a mother, this is the call. Do whatever he asks you to. Parents, do not provoke your children in anger, but bring them up in the discipline and in the instruction of the Lord. Do whatever he asks you to. That is when your life as a parent becomes grace-filled. When you respond to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3, the call to be a good son and a good daughter, when you respond to his law, to, do what, to doing whatever he asks you to, that is when your vocation is being grace-filled. Be it to spouses, husbands and wives, the wonderful vocation that you have got. Are you able to respond to the call, do whatever he asks you to? Ephesians chapter 5, verses 21 onwards. Be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, be subject to your husbands as you are to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, just as Christ is the head of the church and the body of which he is the saviour. Just as the church is subject to Christ, so also wives ought to be in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Do whatever he asks you to. Responding to that call of do whatever he asks you to, Husbands and wives, the moment you respond to his call, you respond to his word, you're letting your vocation as a spouse being filled with grace. To make it grace-filled, to let it penetrate into every part of your being, every part of your vocation, as a son, as a daughter, as a parent, as a husband, as a wife, to go into different parts of your, your life, as in your relationships, in your friendships. Are you grace-filled in your friendships? The scripture tells us in the book of Sirach, the book of Sirach, chapter 6, verse 16 and 17, the word reads, Faithful friends, a life-saving medicine and those who fear the Lord will find them faithful friends a life-saving medicine and those who fear the Lord will find them those who fear the Lord direct their friendship aright for they for as they are so are their neighbors also do we live our friendship according to this command only then are we responding to that beautiful exhortation, do whatever he asks you to do. It is not about living my friendship the way I feel that I want to live it. It's not about living my, my son or my sonship or my daughtership in relationship to my parents the way I want to. It's not about living my spousal relationship the way I want to. It's not even about living all these relationships based on how the world asks us to. But it is about living all these relationships and these vocations based on how his law and his word would require of us. Do whatever he asks us to. That is why Mary's life was so grace-filled. And this starts trickling into every aspect of our life. It could be your profession. Your profession is a call. It could be a call to medicine. It could be a call to, to any kind of professional area which is working for the betterment of society. But it is a call. It is a vocation. It is not just a profession. It is a ministry. And in that as well, the invitation and the call do whatever he asks you to. Are you a person in the business field or dealing with finance? Is it grace-filled? 
Because if it is not according to the statutes of the law, it's not according to the statutes in the word of God. If it doesn't come forth from the depths of God's heart, if it doesn't come from your heart in response to God's heart and God's call and God's wishes, then your profession or your life is not going to be grace filled. And once we cease to be grace filled, then we will cease to be fruitful. Our professions are meant for a reason. That call and that vocation. It could be for me as a priest. I'm called to be grace filled in my priesthood. My priesthood cannot be led just as I would want to lead it. Or just as how the others lead it. I could not hide behind an excuse of saying that the others live their priesthood in this particular manner and that is why I lead it. I've got to ask myself, is my priesthood in response to the call, do whatever he asks you to? Does my priesthood involve a sacrifice that God is calling me to? To be responsive and tell the Lord, Lord, I will respond to your call, do whatever you ask me to. That is when it is grace filled. That is when it achieves the aim that God wants it to achieve. You could be in medicine, you could be a doctor, you could be an engineer, you could be working as a laborer, you could be working as, as a mason, you could be working as a carpenter. It doesn't matter. Is your life grace filled? You could be in ministry. It doesn't matter. Is your life grace filled? Are you responding to the call, do whatever he asks you to? That is when there is sincerity. That is when there is honesty. That is when there is goodness. That is when there is godliness. Today we live in a world where success is everything. You are judged by the success that you have achieved. You are judged by the fame that you have. You are judged by the financial benefits that you have. That is how the world will see you. But is that how God will see you? Will God measure your life, your vocation, based on your bank balance or your success? Or will God look at you and me and ask, did you do whatever I asked you to? He will never ask us, were you fruitful? But he will ask us. He will never ask us, were you successful? But he will ask us, were you fruitful? That is why he chose us, as the scriptures would say, in the gospel according to John, chapter 15, the Lord himself would tell us in verse 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is our call and this is our vocation. Ask ourselves, do the words that come forth from our lips, be it in our vocation as a son, as a daughter, as a husband, as a wife, as a, as a parent, as a father, as a mother, or in our vocations or our professions, do the words that come forth from our lips, is it in response to God's call, do whatever he asks us to do. Every word to be filled with grace. That is when we create a society of love. That is when we create a community of love. That is when we don't see the other as a challenge and a competition for us. But we see the other as one who complements us. Are my words grace-filled? It's a question we need to ask ourselves in every conversation. Not to utter careless words. Not to utter words of filth. Because they don't have grace in them. As the scripture would tell us in Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. 
the word would say, I tell you, on the day of judgment, you will have to give an account for every careless word you utter. You will have to give an account if it's not grace-filled. How grace-filled are my words? In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. Let no evil talk come forth from it, so that your words will give grace to those who hear and listen. In Psalm 19, verse 14, the word says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, my Lord. Let the words that come forth from my lips be acceptable to you. Are our words grace-filled? Are our actions grace-filled? Are our thoughts grace-filled? Every thought process which the world will not see outside, but which our God can see. Are our thoughts filled with grace? Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God. Let your thoughts and your minds be transformed according to the will of God. Don't conform it to the world. So what goes through your mind? What goes through your thoughts? That which is hidden from the world and has, is there in those little dark areas of our life, is that grace-filled? The thoughts that you have at present, is it grace-filled? The thoughts that you have when you meet someone else, maybe someone of the opposite sex, maybe someone you don't like, someone you don't agree with, are your thoughts grace-filled? Is God's presence there? Or is it conformed according to the world? For if, if according to the world, the world would tell you to hate, the world would tell you to indulge in lust, the world would tell you that it is okay and normal to be reactive. So are your thoughts going to be conformed to the world? Because if it's getting conformed to the world, then we are in strike contrast to his law that says, do not conform to your minds to the world, but be transformed in the renewing of your minds. Are the looks that we have, is it grace-filled? Everything that comes forth from our eyes in Matthew chapter 6, verse 22, the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. In your looks, are you responding to the call, do whatever he asks you to? The wonderful gift of our looks, is it being, is it being used in response to God's will? Or do we want to hide behind what the world does and say it's fine and it's normal because everyone does it? Are your looks grace-filled? The scripture once again tells us in Psalm 101 verse 3, I will not set before my eyes anything that is base. I will not set before my eyes anything that is base. Dear brothers and sisters, our words, our thoughts, our actions, our looks, let it be grace-filled. What the Blessed Mother was able to do was, was not because she was called to be the mother of Jesus, but rather her life of being filled with grace is what ultimately led her 
to that beautiful vocation. And it is a challenge for us as well. And it is a call to us as well to live this grace-filled lives in every vocation that God has given us to respond to the invitation, do whatever he asks us to do. Let us offer ourselves in prayer. God, our loving Father, we offer the vocations that you have invited us to. We remember the beautiful words that were said, highly exalting the Blessed Mother. Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Lord Jesus, we understand that there is a call for us to be filled with grace and to live that grace in our vocation as a son, as a daughter, as a husband, as a wife, as a father, as a mother, in my profession, in my vocation. Oh Jesus, I understand that I've been called to be grace-filled. Let my words, let my looks, let my thoughts and let my actions be so filled with grace that what people see in me is the presence of Christ. And thus, may I be fruitful. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.